Shalom, brothers and sisters. I come to you again. I want to talk to you about uh, this perpetual state of youth that our people are kept in. Right now, we have been kept in this state of mind for such a long time that many of us can't grow up, okay? And this youthful mind, this youthful thought is, is, is not good for our people at all. Um, right now, you have black people who are so out of the loop, so out of touch with what's going on in this world that here we are on what they call Black Friday and you got black Negroes out shopping on Black Friday not knowing the history behind Black Friday this was the slave day sale okay they used to sell black Negroes that was the real Black Friday and here we are out here spending our money some of you can't even barely pay your your doggone rent but you out here making our enemies rich because you got to have that new gadget now I'm not saying that if there's something you absolutely need, whether you earned it or not, okay? You know, you got people saying, well, I earned this money, I'm going to spend my money. Some of the things that we buy, we just don't need. We, we buy so much nonsense, and we think that, that the Most High is okay with this. The Most High says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For he that loveth the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We go out here and we buy these things as if that's going to add some type of status to us. My son, let me tell you about him. Some of the children in the neighborhood were teasing him because of his shoes, okay? Shoes. <laughs> Our people are so ignorant. Because my son, he goes and he buys uh, very inexpensive gym shoes uh, meant to cover his feet, okay? Now, recently he did go to a yard sale where a brother around here who buys two and three hundred dollar gym shoes he was just selling them for like five dollars and he had only worn them um a couple of times he told he's only wore these a few times he was an older man he had some really nice gym shoes name brand gym shoes the kind that y'all spend two and three hundred dollars for my son spent two dollars three dollars and five dollars for some practically brand new shoes Okay, but many of you will say, I don't want no used shoes. I'm telling you, these were literally probably look like they were only worn once or twice, just like the fella said. But some of y'all so ignorant, you feel good to tell somebody that you blew some money on $300 on one pair of shoes. But my son spent 15 or $16, got about five pair of almost brand new shoes. And they still looking good even to this day because he got so many to go through, so many pairs of them. Not to mention the ones that he had that he um, bought from Walmart. But yet you have kids teasing and uh, saying those shoes are cheap, this, that, and the other, even though, even though they were originally priced at um, two or three hundred dollars or a hundred dollars or whatever. That shows you how ignorant our people are. You have people who can't pay their bills, but they take pride in their expensive cell phone, their expensive shoes, their expensive clothes. What idiocy is that? We have a group of people this generation and I just can't put it on this generation because you have the parents that are just like this our people are so whacked out at this point that the only hope is for divine intervention there is no amount of teaching training videos preaching prayer or anything that's going to deal with this ignorant mindset that our people have I, I, I thought about this and you know I talked about it before where you look on YouTube and you will see all of these videos where black men are talking about this is why we choose a white woman or the white woman or this is why we choose women of the other race and you have women, black women, um, th this is why black women are starting to look at white men and all, we sound like a bunch of idiot teenage kids. As a matter of fact, I'll take it further back than teenage. We sound like little um, uh, preteens talking this foolish nonsense. Ain't no videos of white women talking about, oh, the white man, he's just such a dog and all of this different stuff. He just, the white white man ain't no good. You ain't gonna find no videos like that. And you ain't gonna find no videos where, where white men are talking about white women ain't nothing but bees and H's. You ain't gonna find that. But only a stupid group of people. The Most High says my people are stupid and they are ignorant and foolish. To do good, they don't know. But to do that which is evil, they know that very well. 
don't y'all know how stupid you sound black man and black woman you you sound stupid on here making videos about why you choosing the white woman it wasn't too long ago that the white woman was saying oh he raped me and you ain't touched her white behind but but your head get put on the chopping block because she said you raped her and that stuff ain't stopped that's why kobe bryant went through that and bill cosby is going through that you have all these women i, I just want to touch on this bill cosby thing for one moment now i'm not saying that he didn't sleep with these women okay i'm not saying that at all i believe he did but let me explain something to you let me give you this scenario about rape that you need to wrap around your ignorant brain for a minute if you think or feel within your heart of hearts that you were raped by a man one time, how the heck did he get his hands on you two and three times? Because you would be saying to yourself, well, he raped me. How did he do get, how did he rape you two or three times? That means you obviously didn't feel like he was a threat to you the, the first time for you to go back. And the one woman is saying that he was sitting up on his bed or his couch or whatever in his house coat. Now, any woman who wants me to believe that she was raped and you sitting up in some man's house or his hotel room or in his bedroom or in his apartment and he got on his night clothes or his house coat what the hell are you doing there okay see this is the type of ignorant stuff I'm talking about like I said I'm not saying that the man didn't have sex with these women but to make it seem like you were um, somehow violated or you felt threatened by this man we know someone who was really raped. We, as a matter of fact, we know, that, know more than one person who was really, truly raped. This person, one person was raped so bad that she left the state of Michigan and moved somewhere else that night. As a matter of fact, the next day, because she feared for her life, okay? And another person had to escape her rapist by jumping from a second story window. She jumped out the window and landed on a fence, okay? Now, I'm not saying that every case of rape is a violent rape, okay? But what I am saying is when a woman says that she was raped two or three times, I got a lot of questions going on in my mind about that type of scenario. If someone raped you, why the heck are you in their presence again? See, really what it was is you wanted some fame and fortune, so you were willing to put yourself in quote-unquote harm's way again so that you can possibly attain to some type of fame. He ain't innocent by any means, but uh, let's be real here, okay? There are people out here really being raped. There was another case with it that kind of remind me of the, the same scenario. There was this um, Asian woman who had, she gave birth to this child that looked like it had some type of, um, it was real tall and it walked strange like it was part animal and part human. There's some footage on YouTube showing this whatever it is i mean it didn't look fully human but it was walking around just looking tripped out okay this woman claimed that some creature came out of the woods and raped her several times over a period of months think on that for a minute some weird creature raped you several times over a period of months so after it raped you the first time when you saw it the second time, you stood there again and let it rape you again, and then the next time, again, and, and then again, and then again, again, over a period of months, this thing, this creature, as you call it, raped you? This is what I'm talking about. It's some stuff going on in, in this world that most people are so dumb. They hear the story and they say, oh my God, that poor woman, she was raped uh, several times by this creature. You dumb nitwit, okay? Oh my goodness. As you all can see, I am a person who is at the point of just throwing in the towel, okay? Makes you want to holler and throw up. Okay, let me, let me say something. Let me say something. We're so used to fruity tooty, I love you, I forgive you, I'll, I'll tolerate you, I'll put up with you, I'll deal with your nonsense. The most I said, even he said, my spirit will not always strive with man. In other words, I'm not going to always put up with this mess. And the way I feel, I talk to so many people. I talk to so many people, and some people act like they got soup for brains. You know, I, I talked to one person, um, <laughs> family member, okay? 
Um, I don't know if the person will see this video. If they do, I mean, this is all said in love. I don't hate you. I say these things because I love my people, okay? But these things are said in love. I talked to this person, and uh, they were telling me about some incidents that occurred to them, okay? In my opinion, they were very clear racial incidents. You hear what I'm saying? But this person wants to throw it out of their brain. Oh, I don't think it was because I was black. I think it was. I think they would have done this to a white person too. I'm like, man, you are that stupid. As old as you are, you that stupid. That you you want to say that it didn't have nothing to do with race, when what you just described to me was purely because you got black skin and you a man. So I'm saying to myself, <laughs> our people are so gone. And now this person, this particular person, just so happened to have a mixed child, and so sometimes that clouds our visions. We we had one brother say that they don't want to watch certain documentaries because they don't want it to cloud their vision about white people. I mean, they, they done showed you who they are. What do you mean cloud your vision? This ain't no cloudy vision. This stuff is clear as day. And anybody who is that old who feel like they want to just close their eyes to it, they don't want to hear it, don't want to know it, don't want to see it. I don't know what to say with that kind of person because these people are out here targeting our people. And when you look in the book of Revelations, um, with the, the saints that are crying before the altar, they're saying, day and night, Father, how long before you avenge our blood to them that dwell upon the earth? These are people that are dead. This, these are the slain of Yah. They're already dead, and they're before the altar crying, okay? And so, if they're crying, you would think that if they're before the altar in heaven crying, that they would be finished with this earth, right? Just enjoying the streets of gold? Well, no, they want revenge, people. They say, look, we want revenge to those that dwell upon the earth. So no doubt the people that did this to them, they're gone too. So why do they want re revenge for their blood that's been spilled upon the earth? Because they're saying, look, I want the ancestors, I'm, I'm sorry, the descendants of those people. I want the descendants. I want revenge. But yet you have ignorant Negroes sitting back saying, oh, we're supposed to love and we're supposed to forgive everybody. I know I talk about this kind of stuff a lot, but anybody who can't separate the fact that us being who we are as a people is directly connected to who they are as a people. It's like the yin and yang, the white, the black, the um, dark, the light. And see, m many of us have been taught that we represent darkness because we have the darker skin. When it's actually the opposite people, you have people who have transformed themselves into the angels of light. You hear what I'm saying? They've transformed themselves into the angel of light and to where we demonize our own people in favor of people who have, who have demonized the whole population of the world. They tell you that every other group of people are savages, terrorists, thugs. They tell us all of this, but they fail to give you their background and what they continue to do to this day. You have that officer sitting up there like a little choir boy with his eyes so blue, just batting. I'm so innocent. I was afraid of the big black man, even though I, I'm just as big as he is. You know, I mean, I, I might not, I'm not as fat as he was, though. I'm 210, 215 pounds, somewhere around there, and, and, and I'm six foot four. So, so, yeah, I know I'm tall, too, but he was bigger than me, and I was freaked for my life. I was so scared, and I just needed my mommy. It's like, get real. You had the gun, and you know this boy didn't have the gun. I'm so sick and tired of these hypocrites. And guess what? The Most High is sick of you, too. The Most High is sick of you, too. And all of you ignorant black people who stood in support of this person, just like um, um, Jamie Foxx told um, uh, Stephen in the movie Django, at the end, when he tried to creep out the door after being siding with all these people who were just messing over our people. He's sitting in the big house looking down on the Negroes out in the field. And when he tried to walk out the door, Jamie Foxx said, no, Stephen, you get right back over there where you belong. You go down with the ship situation. Let me let this wind stop for a minute. He said, since you want to be on these people's side, you're going to go down with them. Okay, this is what he said to him. So all of you people, the Larry Elders of the world, the um, 
uh, what is uh, the uh, Jesse Peterson or whatever or Patterson, whatever the heck his name is. All of you people who want to sit back and talk about this thug who brought it on himself and all this different stuff. Um, the Most High gonna deal with you according to His word as well. There's a judgment attached to your ignorant behind too. Okay, back to this perpetual state of youth we're in. We're so youthful minded. When you look at kids, all hell can be breaking loose around kids. But if they got a Game Boy, they'd rather deal with that than to deal with what's happening around them. Um, if a child is hungry, they don't care what's going on over in Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, the Gaza Strip, Detroit, Michigan, St. Louis, Los Angeles, Peterson, Ferguson, whatever. They don't care about none of that. They just want their food. Give me my plate, mama. They don't care. And that's what seems to be happening to our people. <laughs> Perpetual state of youth. We can't move beyond um, petty things to actually rise to the challenge that's before us, which means that we are supposed to unite as a people. But most of us don't want that. Somehow we think if we magically unite with those who hate us, that they're going to pull you under their arms. I'm going to hide you. I'm going to hide this Negro in my bosom. I'm going to protect him when this race war happens. I'm going to protect this Negro because he's on our side. No, they're going to blow your brains out too. You understand what I'm saying? So for you to ignorantly think that these people going to magically love you just because you're on their side, when they, when they run out of niggas to gun down, they're coming after you because it's in them to want to do these things. And again, I'm going to say that I don't believe that all white people are this way. I don't believe that all white people think this way. As a, matter, as a matter of fact, many of them have come out and protest with us. Now, I want you all to understand something. Just because we say things and we speak things about the judgment of, that's coming up on these people and we're talking about racist white people, don't come and we had a, we had a um, very good white friend of ours um, who actually confronted us. He uh, confronted my husband and said that um, I'm a little bit too over the top with some of the things that I say and um, he may see this video too and I want to say brother that you know you know we considered you to be our brother and when you decide that you're gonna kind of call yourself chastising us because of how we feel about what's happening to our people you are basically choosing a side you're saying look um, um, I uh, respect you and appreciate you as a people but you're talking about my people which is white people you gotta understand if you call yourself grafted into us that you should no longer consider yourself a part of the family of people that the Most High is going to judge being grafted into a, a different family you can, you're, you're basically attaching yourself to the racist that I'm talking about because that's who I'm talking about. I'm talking about white racist, okay? And see, that goes back to, to it being us and them, white and black. That's what it goes back to because if you feel more sympathy for the poor white racist that's being talked about than you do for the poor black person that's being killed, shot, raped, maimed, murdered, then you got a problem you have a serious problem that you need to deal with and you ignorant black people who who want to um side with these people and uh well say well mike brown he did do a strong arm robbery so i guess by your standards um yeah he deserved to die blow his brains out which is what they did because he committed a strong arm ro ro robbery so then you need to say the same thing for for winona writer okay in which there are reports saying that this young man put the money on the counter and he didn't do any robbery at all they were just not wanting to sell cigarettes because they thought he was too young we don't know what the truth of that is but the fact of the matter is did he deserve to die for that and for all of you israelites who say well we are under the under the curses we are ain't nobody saying we're not I have a problem with people who have zero compassion for what our people are going through and act as if uh, why are you talking about it? You know this is the law. You know the, the, the most I said this was going to happen because of our disobedience. I have a problem with people who think like that. Have you turned off your compassion? Do you not feel anything for Mike Brown? Do you not feel anything for Trayvon Martin and Jordan Davis and all of these countless other black people? Uh, Renisha McBride, do you not feel anything for them? Are you so caught up in your own world that you have detached yourself from the suffering of other black people? That is ignorant so-called brother and sister 
that is so ignorant. I, the snooty black folk, I, you know, I have zero patience for snooty black people. I expect white people to do what they do and act the way they act, okay? I expect it because the scripture says the lust of their father shall they do, okay? They are of their father the devil. But I'm only talking to those who, who act that way. I'm not saying that every last one of them are this way, okay? I have to keep saying that because people have selective hearing in this country and in this world in large. But anyway, it's, it's, it's to the point where when I hear brothers and sisters pretend or act as if they're tired of hearing various ones speak about these injustices and why are you talking about it, why are you dwelling on it, why are you fretting over it, why are you dealing with this, blah, 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 blah. when I hear these type of things, I'm telling you right now, that makes me sick to my stomach because we don't have to turn off our compassion for our brothers and sisters. We need to pray that our brothers and sisters can come into the light and understand why these things are happening. Yes, the curses are upon us, but that is our job to tell our people why the curses are upon them, okay? But at the same time, you don't have to shut up your bowels of compassion. You don't have to sit back in your cozy little life and pretend like, oh, well, it's not happening to me. That's that insignificant Negro over there. That's, that's exactly how some of our people act. And that's why when I think about all the black people who set their Thanksgiving Day table like little children who are having their tea party, you done heard somebody tell you. You heard somebody tell you what this day represents, but you're going to still set the table. You're still buying the same turkey that the heathen bought, and you're still stuffing your mouth with the same parasitical ham that the heathens forced down our throats when we got here. And you're going to justify it because you just, you know, hey, that ain't what I'm celebrating now, but you, you, okay, I didn't want to go back into that. Anyway, I got to talk about this perpetual truth again. We need to grow the heck up, people. We as people need to grow up. Because we are, we act like simple-minded nitwits. There was a, um, a politician that um, recently called black people simple-minded darkies. Now, on one hand, I was upset by it, okay? But on the other hand, I said, you know what? I can't argue with this man. He's telling the truth. He's racist and hateful in saying it, okay, because that's how they've built us. They've made us this way through all of their programming and through their systematic oppression. They've made our people act this way and, and come into this frame of thought. But at the same time, it is true. This is what they've created. They've created simple-minded darkies. Now, I don't fall in that category anymore. Okay, at one time I was a simple minded darky, as he called it, but I'm not simple minded no more. And I suggest you all put away your simplicity too and put on some, some, um, skill, some thinking. So, okay, just want to see how much time I had left, but put on some sense, get some knowledge, understand what's happening around you so that people in the world don't have to call us simple minded darkies because that goes for the people in Africa too. You got people over in Africa talking about, oh, we got our vaccines. Oh, we're, we're so glad the Red Cross, they came here and they gave all of our children their vaccinations and they just pumped you full of the very disease that's killing people. We so simple minded that Ain't nothing changed in hundreds of years. In centuries, y'all, centuries. We ain't talking decades and years. We're talking centuries. Lips are getting dry. It's kind of chilly out here, but I'm out here, okay? Nothing has changed in centuries, okay? These people have been the same. The same thing has played over and over, and the beat goes on over and over and over. Genocide, murder, I hate Negroes. I hate black people. I hate donkeys. The same thing. My... Okay, I have an animal fight over there. They're fighting again. My ducks and the goose, they are fighting. Let's see if I can catch a little bit of that. Oh, can I catch it? Uh, okay, I'm not going to get off topic here. I tried to catch it earlier and I couldn't. But they were fighting each other. Anyway. I'm going to try to get a little bit of this. Try to get a little bit of it. I'm gonna have to break this up because like I was telling I was trying to film earlier that we had this white duck right here who came into the um, to the um, family later okay he came in later we had that duck right there first 
and we had that goose over there okay and then the white duck he came later but he kind of took over okay like this is his yard and i said it kind of reminds me of africa what has happened all over this planet where you have the dark duck who was here first right and you had that goose over here who was here first we bought them like three two or three years ago about three years ago and then we bought this rascal last year he's actually my mother's duck but anyway ever since he's been here he's been trying to take over and uh he used to run my duck waddle waddle there out of the pond as you see he was just trying to drown him i don't know if i got any of that but i said it's very interesting because all of the white animals that we've gotten except for fluffy she's she was pretty good but he has killed this one right there he's killed um some of my chickens drowned them he drowned one of my black chickens straight up y'all y'all hear what i'm saying I thought he was catching a fish and I, I actually had it on camera. I think my husband deleted it by mistake, but I was like, oh, he's catching a fish. He was actually drowning my black chicken. Yes, he was. I said, ain't this something? This white duck drowned my black chickens in this pond. And then it kind of reminded me too, we had this white rooster, okay? Uh, we raised him from a baby and then we got this brown rooster. His name is Stanley. Stanley is a very good chicken, you know, when he was a baby. And as he was getting older, he used to jump up on my mother's lap. He loved getting on my mother's lap, okay? And um, whenever any of the hens would jump on her lap too, he would peck them in the head like, get down, this is my mama, you know? And he would go to sleep on my mother's lap. And, uh, but anyway, Stanley is, he's the only rooster we have left. We ate the rest of them. But the white rooster that came along, he was attacking my children. He was attacking my husband. He was attacking me. And so I used to tell the kids, make sure when you go over near that white rooster that you take a stick to keep him off you, okay? One day, one of the children came in the house and told us, um, Mommy, the white rooster is dead. Stanley killed him. And we were like, oh my goodness. Stanley said, he, he reminds me of the tribe of Gad, <laughs> where he said, okay, you think you're going to come and take over Africa, but you know what? This is my land. This is my little Africa. You are not taking over here. You attacking my people, my family, and I'm going to have to deal with you soon. At first, they used to fight, you know, territory. Stanley was, um, you know, protecting his territory. You know, he was even protecting the children from the white rooster. So Stanley decided, okay, he ain't stopping. He, he's, he's continually trying to attack people. He's trying to take over my my place. I've been here for years, and he just came here last year. That white chicken, we got the same time we got us that white duck, right? Listen to the white, y'all. You hear what I'm saying here? Anyway, Stanley said, I got to deal with him. He's trying to take over my farm. This is my Africa farm, and he ain't taking over. So I got to put him down. I got to put him out of his misery. So... I would be lying if I if I didn't feel bad for the little fella. When they told me he was gone, that Stanley killed him, I said, that poor fella. I was imagining what it was like for that rooster to take his last breath, and I felt bad for him because I said, you know, he was an animal. He was my animal. He was our pet, you know. Um, not really a pet because at some point he was going to get eaten, but um, Stanley put an end to all of that. He said, you ain't taking over this chunk of land. This is my land. Okay, uh, I'm sorry for that little interruption, but I, I just had to say that and um, deal with that quick little issue because it's just very interesting how the, the, the white duck is trying to put the, the dark chicken out of his own territory. That is just really, really interesting to me. Um, it looks like I'm out of, almost out of time, but I'm going to try to um, go ahead and put this cord back in here and catch this last little minute but um anyway um for my people who just want to stay in the simplistic way of thinking i just gave you a brief uh little history or demonstration here of what has happened in this world we have had a people that have come into this world that have infiltrated the indigenous populations and have been systematically killing us and trying to take over in this last day but guess what the Most High says the spirit of Elijah is going to come the last day and it's going to set things in order, set all things in order. The two witnesses, when they come on the scene, they're going to be doing some things in this land that's going to shake nations, okay? And uh, all of the wrongs are going to be made right. We're going to be put back into our own land. So that means the people that are there, they got to go somewhere. So the Most High is going to be putting the enemy out, 
okay just like stanley did stanley said look you little chicken you little rooster you ain't taking over my land you ain't taking over as a matter of fact it's time for you to go so it is what it is people and that was a very good demonstration of what is going to take place in this last day i'm not i'm not being hateful all of you bible thumpers white and black if you just open up your scriptures crack open the bible for any amount of time you will see that what i'm saying is true that the the tables are about to turn and truth and liberty for the people of israel shall prevail shalom